Amen, amen. Father, we thank You for Your Word. Oh, Your Word is so good in Jesus' name. Once you get into the Word, you realize He done did it. If that's all you get out of this message today, take it. He done did it. Well, I need salvation. He done did it. That's what the cross resurrection was all about. Now, you are the one that has to respond to Him and say what He done did. What did He done do? Romans 10, 9, Confess Jesus as Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. That's your done do. Then you're born again. Amen. Well, He done did it about, about filling people with the Holy Spirit. Acts 19, you're the one that has to respond to Him and say, Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. And then you start speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. You just start flowing with Him. Amen. Number three, healing belongs to you. You don't have to pray, God, please heal me. Please save me. Please fill me with the Holy Spirit. He done did it. He done healed you. Isaiah 53, 5, by His stripes you are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24, by His stripes you were healed. He done did it. He says, well, if He done did it, how come I'm trying to get Him, uh, trying to make Him to do it? Because you're ignorant of Scripture. He don't, he don't go by what you think. He goes by what the Bible says. So you have to start going by what the Bible says. He done did it. If all you do all day, rest of the day, rest of your life, every time a prayer or something comes up, He done did it. You speak Scripture to it because Scripture just simply already tells you what He done did. Amen. Somebody probably made a song about that. He done did it. He done did it. He done did it. I don't know if that's good English, but that's what came up in my spirit. And it's being transmitted to you right now. He done did it. What is it? Well, the grandkids. Well, this. Well, that. He done did it. The Scripture plainly says He done did it. What are you saying? Well, I'm believing God's going to. No, He done did it. There's no gonna to gods. There's no such thing. Not in the Bible. The only one thing that God's going to do that He ain't done yet is send Jesus back to this earth to get us. He ain't done that yet, but He's done everything else. Amen. Death, burial, resurrection, virgin birth, everything. Now, Lord, and coming again is the last one. And then our response is, yes, Lord Jesus, take my life, do something with it. And He will. Yes, Holy Spirit, I, I receive You now. And You begin to speak in tongues on a daily basis. Amen. Done did it. And it all comes from first Second Corinthians chapter ten in verse five. Casting down imaginations. Now this whole series here that we're talking about is money. Money in a Christian's hands, a real Christian's hands. What's a real Christian? Somebody that knows God done did it. And they're just praising him and thanking him that they have it. And then they obey what He says. Amen. So, if your God's a going to to God, you're worshiping the wrong God. There's no, there's no going to to God on this. Not anywhere. This. Not of the Bible. There's no going to to God in the Bible. No. He done did it. Get that through your thick head. <laughs> Amen. Get it down into your heart. Let it come out of your mouth. And uh, what are you doing? You're renewing your mind. Romans 12th chapter. That's where the power is at. That's where the glory is at. That's where the peace is at. That's where the, if you're struggling with anxiety, worry, fretting, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, it's because you're not connecting to the God that done did it. And then you simply say, you know what? He done did it. Now I'm lining up with what He's already done. And I say it present tense what He's already done. Amen. <clears throat> so, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations. One version said false imaginations. Casting down false imaginations. It all starts with your imagination. If you start imagining that He done did it, then you know what? You have it. You have to receive what He done did. You have to receive what He done did to be saved. 
You have to receive what He done did concerning the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to, you have to take a realization, a revelation. That means you can't be talked out of it through your imagination. Everything the enemy does is to give you a false imagination. But what's the Bible say? Casting down imagination, every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Well, how do you get the knowledge of God? Bible. He says, well, my church don't believe that. Well, guess what? Your church isn't a church. If they're teaching falseness, don't walk. Run from that place. And find you a good Bible church. Watch the videos. And you'll see that we're, well, we're telling you just Scriptures. Amen. Now, you can't go wrong doing the Scriptures. But you can go wrong, way wrong doing religion for sure. Casting down imaginations. Verse 5, chapter 2 of Corinthians chapter, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedient. Every thought. To, it's not all right to sit around and use your imagination for something else. If you're sitting around imagining how sick you are, what the doctor said, how much medicine you got to take, imagining all the negative things that could happen in life, you're actually taking sides with the enemy forces. You're actually speaking sides with what, G, what the devil's saying instead of what God's saying. That's what insane people do. You don't want to be that. <laughs> you start thinking, well, I'm insane. I guess I'm just crazy. I guess I'm just a bad Christian. You're using your imagination against God. No, use your godly imagination to use it for God. If you're trying to imagine how you can get out of uh, get the blessing to work without you obeying God by giving, here's a false imagination. Well, I gave for a while, but now I need the money. I'm going to use it for my own self, my own ministry, my own self. Then it's a false imagination. If you've changed anything that you used to do, uh, like watching these videos, sewing, doing what God's telling you to do at the beginning. God hadn't changed His mind. You used a devilish, a devilish image, imagination, a devilish imagination to talk you out of. You think it's just you. You don't even realize it's the enemy. If it's contrary to the Word of God, it's the enemy. Amen. So don't do it. Well, this is helping me, or this is feeling good, or this is doing this or doing that. You know, I mean, well, I'm going to make another. What's an excuse? An ungodly imagination. It's kind of like the man that the, uh, the other men was out talking to their friends. And everybody bring their friend with them to the men's group and the church men's group. So he called, and his friend wasn't there. He called and said, oh, do you remember tonight's the men's group? Yeah, I remembered, he said, but my wife is cooking dinner. He said, okay, so he hang up. He said, now wait a minute. Everybody's wives are cooking dinner in here. He called him back up. He said, now wait a minute. He said, everybody's wife is, is cooking dinner. Men's group lasts about uh, an hour. And then we all go home and eat dinner. And he said, yeah, but any old excuse will work. See, are you making excuses to not do what God's telling you to do? That's a false imagination. Well, how do you cast it down? You just show up. You start having negative vibes about the videos, then watch more of them. You start having negative vibes about giving, then give more. Amen? You start having negative vibes about... Uh, you, you, uh, about unity of faith and about uh, casting down imaginations and having negative vibes. See, those negative vibes, if they don't line up with Scripture, you can't go by vibes. That's the way you feel. That's actually the devil manifesting in your mind. Of course, he don't show up in a red suit and say, I'm the devil, obey me. No, what he does is he said, this is you thinking this. This is God telling you. You're supposed to be suffering for sickness. You're supposed to be suffering for sin. No. 
What would the Holy Spirit do? See, when Jesus walked the earth, there was not one person that He made sick. Not one. He healed them all. He said, well, if it was God's will for people to be sick and to be punished and sickness to take their life, He would have said, okay, well, I can't heal you because you're supposed to be punished. Well, I can't heal you. You're supposed to suffer. I can't heal you. He never did that. Not one time did He ever say, okay, suffer for Jesus. Okay, be sick for Jesus. Okay, you know, he never he taught he taught Abraham's blessing. He didn't teach uh, how long did Abraham live, 175 years. So all this shortness of life stuff, that's not God talking. You can believe him for salvation, you can believe him for healing, you can believe him for being filled with the Holy Spirit, you can believe him for financial breakthrough, you can believe that you're rich too. This is this this whole series is about money. It starts with your imagination. If you think poor, you're going to stay poor. If you're going to think, I can't afford to give that, then you will never give it. Why? Because it all starts in your imagination. You're either going to go with what God says in the Bible and bypass your imagination. That's how you cast down false imaginations. Well, the bill collectors say this. Well, then you're going to go what the you're, you're going to start worshiping bills. You're going to worship bill, old bill, old bill collectors. No, you start we start worshiping, and honoring God with your money. Then, I mean, you've given Him your life through Jesus. You've given Him your tongue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You gave Him your body to be healed. You give Him your body to be delivered from whatever it is that messes with you. Healed, saved, set free, delivered, and financially blessed. <laughs> then you can trust Him, believe Him, and use faith on that. You have to imagine yourself with more than enough. That's Ephesians 3.20. We teach that last, last time we was together, so you can go back and watch that. You have to imagine, oh, I can never even imagine myself being out of debt. Well, you're using an ungodly imagination. You're tapping into what the devil's saying instead of what God's saying. Use your imagination. See, it all starts in your imagination. There's a lady one time, and when uh, allergy season would come around, she'd stay home. And she would in, she'd uh, get little syringes of salt water and squirt up her nose and through her throat and spit it out and all kind of stuff. And I'm not saying don't take care of yourself, by all means. But she'd say, I can't go to church because that's allergy, allergy season. Well, I let that slide, and the Holy Spirit said, Now wait, you need to help her. You need to help her. She's 85 years old. Uh, so next week she called, Don't don't come and get me. Uh, it's allergy season. I said, Well, wait a minute. I seen you at Walmart. I seen you driving around town. I seen you going out to eat. I seen you over at your daughter's house. I wasn't spying on her, just a small town. You run into people. I, I saw you getting gas in your car. Oh, that's different. I said, so you're going to honor Walmart, daughter, children, gas in your car, and getting groceries above God. She said, it's not like that. And I said, well, tell me how it is then. Well, my daddy had allergies and I inherited it from them. I said, you're not under the curse of the law no more. You've been redeemed from allergies. She said, I have been. She said, well, I'll be at church then. She came by and picked us up. Well, I got in the car so I'm riding, riding with her. See, she had to get her priorities straight. Well, that's the way imagination works. Imagination, of it all starts, if you're going to be rich, which God wants you to be rich, it's not just so you can get a bigger house. It's not just so you can get a bigger house, but it's not just for that. It's not just so you can have a better lifestyle, although it's for that too. It's not just so you can have a new car, or better clothes, or more money, or whatever. No, it's Deuteronomy 8.18 to establish God's covenant here on earth. He gives you the power of wealth. You can have all that stuff too. Don't have it before God. You can have all that stuff too. But remember to do the giving part. When your income increases, give more. Don't just give the same thing you always gave. See, don't do that because then you'll rob yourself. Then you'll get connected to the curse and that's no fun. You won't like that. 
So what do you do? Use your imagination to give more. Amen. Don't worry. I'm not getting ready to take up a big offering. That's not what this is for. But it's so you what? Because God's saying, cast down false imagination. Well, how you do it? Just sit in a chair for a second or two. Look at your hands. Start imagining you got more money. Look at your bank account. Start imagining you got more on your card, more in your bank to give. See? Start imagining increase instead of decrease. See, I remember all been a year or so ago, uh, people all over town were saying, what are we going to do? They're going to close Walmart. I said, who told you that? The internet. And they believed it. They, they would believe the internet. There's so much false stuff on there. It's crazy. They, it's got to be, if it's, if it's in writing, it's got to be true. If it's on the news, it's got to be true. Well, we learned a lot of stuff wasn't true uh, even the last few years. Uh, about all these sicknesses and diseases and all this kind of crazy stuff. The devil always going to paint the worst case scenario. The first case, don't be entertaining those thoughts of worst case scenario. Start thinking what the Bible says. You guys actually think what the Bible says. Cast, just read it again. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, casting down imaginations... One version says false imaginations of every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Oh, it's not false. They really do have this problem. They have the problem or the problem has them. See the difference? Does uh, how, how do you know if you're worshiping money? If you're worshiping money, you're going, you're going to do everything you can to get all your bills paid and forget about poor old God on the end of the run. He can take care of yourself. Amen. But see, you disconnect from the blessing. Before you know it, unexpected bills will be showing up. Problems showing up. Oh my God, what in the world's going on? Remember one time, lady called me on the phone. She's just beside herself. She called for prayer. She's just beside herself. She losing her mind, losing everything, and losing her family, losing everything. I listened to her for a long time, and then I prayed with her. And then the next day she called back the same thing. Next day she called back the same thing. And the Lord dropped in my spirit. She said, tell her this. If she'll fix this, everything else will line up. I said, well, you know, the last three days you've been calling, we've been praying about different stuff. But the Lord dropped this inside of me. And uh, if you do this, everything else is straightened up. She said, what is it? I'll do it. I said, it just sounds like, and then on the inside of me, it's, you, you're talking like somebody that's under the curse. Well, I know I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's right. But you can get yourself underneath the curse again by not tithing and giving. Tithe, offer, and seed. You can get yourself underneath the curse. Even though you've been redeemed from it. It's just like salvation. Even though the Bible teaches salvation through Jesus, if you never confess Him as Lord, you're still under the curse. Even though the Bible says that when you get saved, you can also get filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 19, and speak in tongues. But if you don't yield to speak in tongues, you won't. You'll never be filled with the Holy Spirit. Same way with being healed. Well, the Bible says I am the healed. What are you saying? I believe I'm going to be. That's false imagination. Plain and simple. A false imagination. So if you're going, you have to hook up with the Savior. You have to hook up with the baptizer and the Holy Spirit. You have to hook up with your healed. The way you get hooked up is what goes into your eyes and ears, what goes that into your heart and comes out of your mouth. If you're saying something else besides contrary to Scripture, you're hooked up with something else. Your imagination is running wild. You ever heard somebody say that? Their imagination is running wild. Well, you don't want to do that. You want to run with the Word of God and settle you down. Amen. Well, I'm waiting on God to heal so-and-so. I'm waiting on God to be healed. That's a false imagination. That's like saying you're waiting on God to save you. But if you confess Jesus as Lord, all those who call the name of the Lord are saved. Amen. Well, I'm waiting on God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. But did you ask Him to fill you with the Holy Spirit? Then you're the one that's got to speak in tongues. It's plain and simple. 
He's not going to force you. He's not going to fall on you and slap you upside the head two or three times and get your tongue and make it move. No, you got to do all that. Don't slap yourself, though. Just move your tongue and spray in the spirit. That's financially blessed is the same way. Well, I'm waiting on God to send the money. There's a bill. We live in a, we live in a trillion dollar society. Trillion. There's no shortage of money. We live in a trillions and trillions of dollar society. There's no shortage of money. But how do you hook up with it? The same way you hooked up with Jesus the Savior, Jesus the baptizer and the Holy Spirit, Jesus the healer, Jesus the financier, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You start you start imagining yourself with the money. I had a friend. I didn't really know him, but a, a, this friend of mine was starting a band, and uh, they want me to give the keyboard a ride down to the to to practice, and so I took him there and. No, nobody had the money to take him back home. He said, well, how much does it cost? I said, it'll probably cost so-and-so to take him back to where he lived at. And uh, so he was at my house for about three or four days. We fed him, we watered him, we talked to him, we sit on the front porch, and all I did was pump into him how to believe God for whatever it is you're believing God for. Well, he learned how. He started saying, I have a Yamaha keyboard. The neighbor gave him a Yamaha keyboard. He didn't ask for it, and a stand too. He said, you mean to tell me I don't have to ask nobody for no money no more? I said, no, you can believe God for it. You know, I don't have to call my friends or my grandkids or my mama or my daddy or my brother or my sister and beg them for money no more. Nope, you don't have to. Matter of fact, if you are doing that, you need to repent. They're not your source. God is your source. God may speak to them to help you, but if you're calling and begging all the time for stuff, even though you may have helped them, you got to watch that because you'll, if you become somebody's source, it will hinder them from serving God. Amen. So what do you do? Well, you got to repent and then start using your godly imagination. So we was there about three or four days, and he took his, I'm going to take a little break. He went to the backyard, and he said, he said, when I was in the backyard, I just started looking at my hands. She said, the Lord told me, look at my hands and imagine myself with money. Imagining myself with money. He said, I started seeing stacks of money in my hand. Do you know when he was in the backyard, imagine himself with money, somebody called me on the phone and said, hey, I have this gas money here. If y'all come by and pick it up, you can take him home. Same time. See, when you get it right with God, imagine yourself with money. Instead of trying to figure out who can give you the money, imagine God speaks to somebody else. See, and that's what God did. Amen. He even had enough for a couple of pops. Loaded him up in the car and took him home. He had his new keyboard, his new keyboard stand, and all kind of clothes and shoes and all kind of stuff. Sacks of stuff. He came with the... Uh, this is changed the clothes and left with sacks of stuff and Yomaha keyboard and and uh, all kind of stuff. And he was a uh, he actually when he was a little boy, he was a blood sacrifice for the Satanists. And God forgave him of all that and got him out of it, gave his life to Jesus, got born again, spirit filled. Come to find out he was a backslidden Christian and uh, he was just he way he got back so then he started talking negative about the pastor's wife and all them spirits got messed up in him he repented of all that got everything straightened out serving god doing good now amen it's up in tulsa what are you talking about casting down false imaginations every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bring into captivity if you don't deal with that image it's going to bring you into captivity it's going to capture you. But if you'll deal with it, with the false imaginations, one of the first imaginations that the devil works on is giving. He wants you to quit that because then he can get you. Oh, you don't have to do that. Okay. <laughs> Just don't do it. This time next year, you don't even know where you're at. <laughs> Amen. So what do you do? You can't change that. Don't, there's three things I never change. When I get up, I start praying in the Spirit, rejoicing and having a good time with God. No matter, I'm going by what I feel. 
They first get up, maybe a little bit of grog groggy or something, you know. Praying in spirit for at least an hour, and then after I get them praying in spirit for an hour, even out through the day, I'm still praying in spirit. And then read the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit when you read the Word of God too. And then faith-based materials. And then everything and giving. You never that faith-based is the product is giving. So you give your life, give your time, give your finances. All those three. You'll never, you'll never change that. And no matter what happens, you'll come out. You'll stay on top. And the whole world may think you're going under, but you won't. The whole world can't figure out why you're not depressed and you're just hopping and skipping and jumping in faith. They can't figure it out. Why? Because you're connected to God. What destroyed them, it wasn't meant to destroy them. What the devil meant for evil, God turned it around for your good when you keep going with God. It's kind of like my Uncle Bob. He had an old goat. And he said, I must go hit that old goat in the head with a hammer and kill it. And he hit an old well there. And they were a bunch of him and his kids, his wife and neighbors. Had a big old pile of dirt and sand. They're just going to fill that old well in. And a big hole in the ground, a well. And so he hit that goat in the head. It was kind of sickly. <laughs> and uh, he hit the goat in the head as hard as he could. And the old goat went down on his knees. He thought the goat was dead, so he just threw it off in the well. And they just, uh, all of them took shovels and stood around in a circle and just started shoveling, 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 shoveling dirt in there. And about that time, they heard a bat and a goat walked out on flat ground. How come? Because the goat just shook the dirt off and kept on a going. That's what you got to do, brothers and sisters, is shake the crud off, shake the dirt off by imaginations. Don't entertain those imaginations. And when you do that, what happens is what the devil meant for evil. God turns around for good and elevates you up. Then you walk across on dry, smooth ground. And they would just had their mouths open. The whole world is going to have its mouth open. But what he said really was true. <laughs> well, what God said really is true. You have a great one. You have a good one. We'll see you tonight. Remember, we're talking a series about money. Practice throughout the day imagining yourself giving money and receiving multiplied money. Amen. Have a great one. Have a good one. God bless.